house copper. Today we are going to make meatloaf, which makes my husband very happy. Um, I'm doing some traveling and it freezes really well, um, so that also helps. But I also wanted to show you that it is possible to make pretty much anything, even tomato dishes and baking things, in tin lined copper. Um, of course, you know, you could probably do it with stainless, but I only know it with tin line. So I'm going to show you that it is possible and how I do it. Um, um, it is also, uh, meatloafs is something that you might also want to do in like a, um, uh, enamel dish or a baking dish, which is also fine. In those cases, usually I use tin foil, but, um, in the case of tin line copper, I absolutely do not use tin foil for a variety of reasons. But suffice to say, A, you don't need it, and B, the tin foil and the tin in the oven, um, I just, I don't like to risk it. Um, I don't like to risk scratching the the the, uh, the tin, not the uh, tin slash aluminum foil. Um, and also, I always worry about just heat and discoloration. Um, so anyway, here's my meatloaf recipe, which I have kind of made up, and we'll go from there. All right, recipes. And again, the actual recipe, which I also made up, so feel free to mess around with it, um, is going to be down below beyond this video. But um, I have fresh ground beef, ta-da, nothing fancy. I have shallots versus regular onion. Um, I like how the shallots add a little flavor, but um, are not as strong as a regular onion. Um, plus it just sounds fancier. But I use shallots. You can use a yellow onion or a red onion or a white onion. But I use one um, really huge shallot or two medium sized shallots um, with a pound and a half of hamburger. All right. Next, and I promise if you if this does not work for you in terms of pouring it in, there is um, uh, what I have also done in terms of measuring it in the past. But um, you can use breadcrumbs or panko. Um, you can use your own hand, homemade um, breadcrumbs, but essentially it looks like about a half a cup. And really what I'm trying to do is just create, you know, that mealiness inside your um, your meatloaf. You don't need a lot. You don't want it to be super dry, but you're also kind of letting it absorb any extra wetness. So um, it's really not a lot. Um, it looks like this. It's not a lot of breadcrumbs once you have it all going together. All right, at this stage, this is when I add all of the seasonings. So I have salt and pepper, any salt, any pepper. If you wanna freshly grind it, go right ahead um, for both cases. I go by look and feel a lot. There really is no right or wrong way um, to cook. I think baking, um, it, it, obviously is so much more precise and you need exact measurements of everything except spices, but, um, but not for cooking. Short of putting sugar where the salt is and vice versa, mm, especially spices and other things. All right, so now that I've added salt and pepper, um, I also um, <clears throat> use parsley, just dried parsley. You could, if you wanted, of course, to chop in fresh parsley. There is, again, no right or wrong way to do this. Um, but I add a little parsley. A lot of parsley. Probably three, well, yeah, um, three tablespoons to a quarter cup of parsley, depending on how uh, green you want it to look. It doesn't add too much for flavor, but enough to make a difference. All right, so now I now have my seasoning, my spices, and everything except the garlic. 
you can chop your own. I have kids, I have to hurry. I use about a tablespoon of, or a, I'm sorry, about a teaspoon of garlic, give or take. Um, basically a clove, just drop a clove and add it. That's all you need. Mix that in. Now, I will show you what I really do, and that is, you get the best mix with a hand. Now, now I'm ready for all of this. So here's tomato sauce. Use about half a cup or half a can. And I use about, oh, a quarter cup of tomato paste. You can still use a spoon. I find it goes a heck of a lot faster to use a hand. It's very tomatoey, but that's okay. It gets very absorbed into the meat. It's so wrong, I know. But I just, I find that there's not really a cooking utensil that I like to do as quick and as thorough a job in mixing the ingredients. It's kind of like meatballs. You almost gotta use your hands for meatballs. And look, we're like five minutes into the video and the meatloaf is done. So I'm going to put it in this awesome Brooklyn Cover Cookware um, Rondeau pan. Any shallow baking dish is fine because it's tinlined copper. You don't need, um, you don't wanna preheat it empty, obviously in the oven. I'm gonna make a nice mound. Now, a lot of times too, people will worry about putting this in the oven, but here's the thing. Tin melts at like between 425 and 450 to be, you know, I, anyway, you, depending on the thickness and how hot your fire is, it can go a little bit on both sides of this. But my oven is set for 350 and I have food in the pan. Now the food doesn't completely cover the inside. I have about an inch on one side and a quarter inch on the other side of my meatloaf piece, which I'll show you here in a second. So that's gonna absorb heat too. But again, my oven is set for 350. Tin does not melt at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. It's like a scientific impossibility. So I'm safe as is. And that's how you can, how when I'll say like my tin lang copper is, is baked, baking proof, unless you're baking something at 425 or 450 or 500, you can use it just like any other baking pan. And it's going to bake kind of quick. See, this is the part where your hand is dirty. And I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit more salt, a little more pepper. so fast, I don't have it out. Some parsley. So there it is, meatloaf. And I'm gonna put it in the oven at 350. I'm going to set the timer for about 35-ish mm, minutes, and then I'm gonna check the center um, with a meat thermometer at about that mark. And once I see it at 180, actually, is when I will take it out. So, let's put it in the oven. All right, I actually ended up going an extra 10 minutes, but it's firm, probably didn't need to, and it's perfect.